All right, so in today's video, I'll be showing you a couple of interesting things. Uh, namely, I'll be showing you how to do proper tuning, in-flight pit tuning, that is, um, whilst you're flying. It's not a perfect day to do this because it is quite windy. As you can see, uh, when I'm flying in this direction, I've got about uh, 50 kilometers per hour with 55% throttle. And when I turn around, uh, that increases quite drastically to 80 kilometers per hour. So the difference is uh, 30. So we've got a 30 kilometer per hour wind approximately. But anyway, we'll be doing a little bit of pit tuning and um, I'll be showing you how to do it. So um, as you know, my setup has three OSDs. This is the uh, second OSD. So it's a bit cleaner. just gives you the virtual horizon bars. And this one is my pit tuning OSD. And one of the things that you uh, will see now is as I press my red button on the back of my radio and then click the uh, rudder trim switch, you'll see the roll start blinking. That means that we've entered uh, the adjustment mode for roll. And the question is now, what are we actually looking for? Because we can increment and decrement those values uh, by one. But what is it that we actually want to achieve? Well, first of all, we want to get into a throttle that's just about, you know, uh, above cruising throttle. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're above cruising throttle because you don't want to have a situation where you kind of stall and panic and stuff like that. Right. This is why I've got my throttle currently at 58%. Uh, let's put it at, yeah, there we go, almost 60. And so when I look at behavior and how I want things to look like on my camera, then there's a couple of things that I'd like to mention. First of all, let's do pitch, okay? So we scroll forward because pitch is the easiest. Pitch is like the easiest to see when something is wrong. And what I want to see is basically I want, I want good response from my, so these are sharp, Thick inputs, you can see there's even a little bit of wobble, okay, at the end. So let me fly into the wind just to make sure that we are in a good state. So when I fly into the wind, you can see there's a little bit of wobble there at the end, okay. Let's start increasing I and do those changes, okay. Now look at that wobble, okay. So as you can see, when I release my sticks and I'm trying to not have the sticks bounce around after I release them. It's obviously very important that your stick is not contributing to the wobbles. So you can see those are fairly sharp inputs. That suggests to me, because of the wobble, that there's too much eye, definitely too much eye on the pitch axis. So let's roll that down to six and let's start, let's look at how it's behaving. So if the, if the eye term is too low, then once you let go of the sticks, it will start drifting in some direction. You see now, slowly, it's drifting towards the ground, okay? We don't want that, so we've got to increase it. There's also a little bit of wobble again, but not that much. You go to eight, that's pretty good. It's pretty solid, pretty solid behavior. Let's look at P. If we increase P too high, then we will also get We'll get sharper movements, but we'll also get that residual wobble, especially on a wing. Uh, this is the baby AR wing, or uh, whatever it's called, AR wing, pro baby, whatever. And what happens is the P is trying to fight all those little oscillations that we get due to the wind, but it's getting a bit too touchy. So you, we want to reduce that. And I'll go back to the value that I had previously, because this one was actually quite a solid value. See, when I go down, it's actually quite solid. Now let's look at roll. Roll is also very obvious to see. If we start increasing the roll value to some unreasonable number, uh, the I term, you'll see that as I'm doing my sharp stick inputs, there's a bit of wobble at the end. It goes like left, right, and then right, left, right again, and kind of wobbles and bobs around. And obviously we don't want that. Now, most of this is down to the wind, but in reality, it's also the P and I terms. So I want to make sure that I do not overshoot, that it feels sharp or as sharp as my stick input, right? So I'm not, you know, I haven't 
by any chance reduced my P term and my I term too low, because otherwise it will feel very weird. But I can definitely tell you that based on the movements, this is just really bad I term. Okay. So right now, we're kind of getting there. And I think probably around 10 is a sweet number. You see, there's no more wobble at the ends. Kind of solid. On the other hand, we need P term in order to counteract the wind. You see, it's quite wobbly. So if I reduce the P term on the roll, look what's going to happen. It's going to roll. And it feels a bit flimsy. So, you know, I, I'm not getting enough from the plane. Okay. So, it's not too bad, but I think it needs a little bit more P. So let's try it with 10. That feels a bit better, but because this is a wing, kind of needs more P on the roll, especially the way that I've set it up, because I don't have a 50-50 ratio um, in terms of my mixes. I've got a 60-40 ratio and it's biased towards the elevator because I want more elevator control than I want roll control because I want this wing to be like nice and stable, right? I don't want too hard movements and the servos that come with this are not the best ones, so they're not really the fastest as well. So it's kind of important that we limit our roll rate and also our roll feed forward. By the way, I one thing that I didn't tell you is that at the beginning of making this video, I actually went out and flew another pack in order to do my auto-tune. Obviously, I would be doing my auto-tune separately from this. And I would start with the P, I, and D terms that are default for wings, which I think was uh, 15, 3, and 5 or something like that. Um, or P, I, and D, respectively. So in any case, um, we're kind of at a sweet spot now, but I kind of feel that the roll is not snappy enough. So I might increase, just increase that a little bit, just to get a little bit better roll. And I feel that my pitch is still too wobbly. So I'll, I'll decrease the I term on the pitch a little bit more. And you see now, it starts feeling a bit better. Let's try something like this. Let's give that a go and see how that behaves. See, that's a lot smoother than what it was before. It's not just the wind. The wind is kind of picking up actually at the moment. But um, the movements feel very solid. Uh, let's go back to the I term. Yeah, that's a bit too wobbly. So let's go with that. And I'll also decrease the D term because that is damping the motion a little bit too much. That was my stick. Okay. I don't know if you could hear that, but that was definitely my stick. See, on the pitch down, very nice. But on the pitch up, it's not. And that is mostly due to the fact that this is a wing um, and obviously when we are pulling up we are increasing the angle of attack of the wing uh, thereby making it slightly unstable and the pressure on the top side of the wing so on the top cord of the wing is actually varying um, quite drastically as as we're moving this so the oscillation is kind of normal uh, and you would find this with almost every wing really um, I mean, there isn't a wing that's not going to behave like this. Uh, let's try an even lower D. That feels uh, better, but maybe this is much better. There we go. Um, I like to round my numbers to the nearest two, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know if it's a good idea. I don't know if it's a bad idea, but um, I don't know. I just like to keep the numbers as such. This makes a bit more sense to me personally. Uh, your experience may vary, but um, this is how I like to have things. And um, let's check our roll again. And then once we're finished with all of this, 
what we can do to verify that this is doing what it's supposed to be doing is I click out of that button on the back side of my radio. Um, this is the additional button that you can install on the TX16. I'll go back to my main OSD and I'll flip the switch to go into cruise mode. So I've left the plane in cruise mode and I'll just see how it behaves in cruise, right? Just want to see if we have any strange tendencies, if it's behaving weirdly, if it's drifting. Now it's windy and this plane is obviously being pushed around in all directions. But in reality, it's quite solid. You see, it uh, keeps its altitude when it's flying into the wind. It's going a bit nose down and it's reducing the throttle. Uh, whereas when it was going, let's give that a little bit more throttle. Okay, here we can do a little bit of throttle override, but actually that's quite solid, you see? And we don't have any turbulent flow. It's actually quite solid. So on a nice and quiet day, this would actually prove itself to be a very, very nice wing, okay? Um, and when we're flying into the wind, sorry, away from the wind, so with the wind, then we can see that it's also maintaining altitude. If I reduce my throttle, it goes down, but then it increases again because it's obviously noticing that it needs a little bit more airspeed, okay? Um, so that works as intended. Now, what many people do as a bit of a mistake is they forget to save the settings once they land, okay? And it's just a stick command. You can do it via your computer. Um, you can land like that. It's not a problem. But um, it's much easier to do it via the stick commands. I'll be doing a little bit of uh, flying around just to see how it behaves. Do a nice roll, very solid. That was also quite nice. I didn't exit out of it properly, but that's my fault. And yeah, it's wobbly. That's kind of to be expected, okay? If I raise my altitude, if I get above the height of the buildings in the background, and we should have much smoother airflow because it's actually the buildings that are creating this really turbulent airflow. Um, obviously, uh, since we are where we are, I can't go above 120 meters. So I'll be leaving it right there. And you can see it's a bit smoother. Not that much better, but still a little bit better. Um, and we can also attempt a nice landing. Now, I don't know how well the audio is getting picked up because I am not recording this with my regular recording equipment. So it might not sound that great, but um, there's something I can do in post-processing, I will. Um, And there we go. That was a beautiful landing. So let's see. What did we do? We covered a distance of 14, almost 15 kilometers, which is nice. Uh, we had a max altitude of 115, which is good. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much overall pretty good performance. And now, of course, the most important thing, if you go into the menu, and then just exit out of that and then hold your throttle stick in the, so this is obviously mode two. So mode two would be down and left on the throttle and down and right on the aileron. Then what you will find is that that will save the settings. And so now everything that we did is saved, which is good. We go into our pit tuning screen we can see that all the values are saved correctly. And that's very good. So yeah, that was, uh, that was about it uh, regarding the pit tune. There's not much more to say. It's not that difficult. Um, it just takes a little bit of time and practice to get used to. And obviously a nice and calm day is much better 
to do this than a windy day uh, like it is right now. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new. And if you have any questions or comments, just uh, leave them down below. Thanks for watching.